and I went and made out a list of mistakes that farmers make with insect management. I got to looking at that list, and two things occurred to me. One of them was some of those things I'm not sure that they're really mistakes. They're decisions we make, and maybe the outcome's kind of unpleasant, but maybe we didn't maybe we didn't know any different, and maybe that shouldn't be called a mistake. The other thing is, is if somebody starts talking to me about my mistakes and what I did wrong, and that person doesn't sign my paycheck, I kind of start getting ticked off, right? And I didn't want to make y'all mad at me, and it's like uh, Dr. Prosco said, I'm not here to criticize you. So I got to thinking about some things, and they worked themselves into this first slide. Things to think about, three things to think about, and we'll put them in the context of insect pest management. And the first one is this. I can't predict the future, and since you're in this room, I'm guessing you can't predict the future either, but some things are pretty darn certain. Let me give you an example. I don't know what my wife is going to buy this month, but I'm pretty darn sure she's going to spend all our money. All right? I don't know what the weather's going to be like in May, but I'm pretty darn sure, Dr. Kim Wright, that there are going to be thrips and peanuts in May. What does that have to do with insect pest management? Know the things that are pretty darn certain. If you know something's going to happen, you can plan for it. Have a plan. That's number one. Number two, hindsight's 20-20. We can look back and see everything perfectly, right? But you've got to turn around and look. There's a lot of value to looking and seeing what did we do last year or the year before, and what was the outcome, and can we do something different this year to have a better outcome? If you do what you've always done, you get what you always got. So we got to look back, it's, and we're going to do that and look at some things, some specific things that happened last year that might <coughs> jog your mind and get you thinking about what you might do different in 2020. Some mistakes are practically unavoidable. That's what kind of came to my mind as I was making that list. There's some things that we do that at the end of the year we might say that's a mistake. But there wasn't really anything you could do about it. You couldn't predict the future. You didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know when you planted peanuts on May the 10th that it was going to be 150 degrees and not rain for 15 days, right? And that's what happened. You didn't know. So we could say, man, that was a bad decision, but you didn't have any way. But the, here's the important thing. But some mistakes are completely unnecessary. It's really important that you recognize the difference. When you start looking back at 2019 and thinking what happened, and you say, well, that didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Was it something you couldn't help, or was it something that you could fix? All right, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to, for the rest of this talk, I'm going to kind of break it down. Now, I'm not going to go into real specific insect management recommendations because you can come to your county grower meeting and get that, right? That's what I'm going to do for you there. Today, I want you thinking about big picture things and what you might can do better on your farm. Things that are pretty darn certain. It's pretty darn certain there's going to be thrips in your peanut fields. I don't know when they're going to get there, and I don't know how bad they're going to be, but they're going to be there. Pretty darn sure about it. There's going to be caterpillars in your peanut field. I don't know what species it's going to be, and I don't know when they're going to get there, and I don't know how many they're going to be, but there are going to be some there. Not every peanut, now as sure as I am that there's going to be caterpillars in your peanut field, not every peanut field in the state of Georgia will need to be treated with an insecticide after planting. That's written very specifically after planting. I believe that an at plant insecticide to control thrips is a good investment. But after that, there are going to be peanut fields in this state that don't need to be treated with an insecticide. Okay. Hot, dry weather leads to lesser corn stalk borer and spider mite infestations. Now, here's four things that are, I think, are pretty darn certain. And you can say, well, I can come up with some other things that are pretty darn certain. What's so special about these? I put these four things up here for a reason. If you think about insect management on your farm, I'm willing to make the argument, and you can argue with me, don't do it now because I'll screw up my talk, but I'm willing to make the argument that if you think about the money that you spend on pest management, and if you think about the times when things didn't go right, where you lost money because insects or, or mites got away from you, most of the time it's related to one of these four or more of these four things right here. There's some exceptions, right? There's some of you that have burr bugs, and that's an exception. But most of the time, it's related to one of these things. We either did something wrong, or we did something right, and we saved ourselves money, or we lost ourselves money. These four things right here. Okay. So let's break it down. Let's look back at, 20, at 2019 with our 2020 vision. 
I heard enough jokes about 2020, 2020 vision from the preacher and everybody else. I'm not trying to make one. All right, I'm going to look back at 2019 and think about what happened. I think Dr. Kimmerite would agree with me and Dr. Um, Colbert and Dr. Mumford and everybody else who grew peanuts and did research in Tifton this year. Thrips and spotted wilt incidents increased in 2019 over what it was the previous year. If on your farm you had more thrips injury than you thought you should have had if it was acceptable to you, or on your farm you had more spotted wilt than what you thought was acceptable or you should have had, there's some things you can do. We can look back and change, we can make a plan and change that, okay? What can we do? We can adjust our planting days, right? We can make sure we select the most resistant cultivars, right? We can think about what insecticides are we using at plant and maybe we want to modify those. Things. There's some things we can do. Okay, thrips were more abundant and so was the virus that they transmitted. Velvet bean caterpillars were abundant and there were peanut fields in this state that were defoliated by velvet bean caterpillars. Lesser corn stalk borers showed up early and they remained a threat all season long. Okay. Think about that. If, if you lost foliage, if your peanuts were defoliated by velvet bean caterpillars or you had peanuts go sick to because of lesser corn stalk borers, ask yourself this, is it because I missed them? If it's because we missed them, then that's a mistake that we can fix, right? Is it because we knew they were there and we were late? We knew those lesser corn stalk borers were there in June, but we didn't spray them until the end of July. Okay. It's because we used the wrong product. We used an insecticide thinking we were going to get good control, and we didn't. Okay. Why did those things happen to us if they happened to you? Rootworms. A lot of us don't have an issue with rootworms because we grow peanuts on sandy soils, but there's some areas of the state where rootworms are becoming a bigger problem, becoming more and more of a problem every year. We may be about to lose the one insecticide we have to control it. But for a lot of people, rootworms are kind of an emergent thing. I didn't have rootworm problems before. I don't ever remember having rootworm problems before. My peanuts went seg two in 2019, and they said it was rootworm injury. Well, this thing, why did that happen? Did we miss them? Were we not looking for them? Did we find them, but we didn't have the, the equipment to put out the one insecticide we can use, right? Granular chlorpyrifos. I don't have a chlorpyrifos applicator. I knew there were rootworms in the field, but they never had a, I never had a problem before, so I let it ride. All right, there's something we can do if that becomes an issue. If you have rootworms every year, you're going to have to do something about that. Another thing, spider mites showed up last summer. Why? Why do we have, if you have a spider mite problem and you think you lost yield to spider mites, is it because we weren't looking for spider mites? Is it because is it because it was so dry that we made the decision not to treat them? Is it because we sprayed an insecticide that made them worse? Because we put orthene on the field or we put a pyrethroid on the field and we flared spider mites. Things when we look back. Now this isn't all the possible things that happened in 2019. It's not all the possible mistakes we could have made. But it's a list of really common things that I saw that if you look back on these and say, well, I, I didn't have a problem with that. Well, that's good. Maybe you had a problem with something else. Something else didn't go right. It's the same concept. Look back, think about it. Think about why it happened and what you might do differently in 2020 moving forward. Okay? And here's the, I got my list and I'm looking at it and I started thinking, well, I don't know that that's a mistake. Okay? And I, I, I call them unavoidable mistakes. I don't even know that's a, you made a decision with the best information you had and the outcome was unpleasant. You planted a seed, you prayed, you rolled the dice, and this is what you got. Here's a picture from last year. This is this is spider mites, okay? Spider mite infestations are not necessarily an unavoidable mistake, but I'll give you a little background about this particular field. This grower didn't make a pyrethroid application to flare these mites, all right? This was a severely drought-stressed field. I don't know what his thought process was because we didn't go through it. Okay, I don't know. Mike showed up in this location. The grower might have said, look, the mites are here. My yield potential is really low. I'm not going to spend the money to try to control these mites. That might have been one thing. It could have rained and turned it around. Maybe if he had sprayed, he wouldn't have this much injury. He would have made a little more yield. In my mind, he had what he got. He knew what he knew. He made a decision, and this was the end result. Okay? 
I'm going to call it an unavoidable mistake. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Right? Here's another one. This is, I talked about rootworms a second ago. This happens to be what we call a banded cucumber beetle, but spotted cucumber beetle, these are all rootworms. They do the same thing. I told you that there's more of them. They seem to be worse than they used to be in Georgia. This insect is very difficult to control. In fact, the only thing we have to control is the granular porphyria fossil. I told you that already. But we've got growers seeing rootworms in fields where we didn't see them in the past. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's because we're seeing more of this species, this banded cucumber beetle, than we saw in the past. I mean, we are. We see more of this than we saw, than we used to see. We used to see more spotted cucumber beetles. Maybe the biology is a little different. I don't know. But we're getting this kind of injury, and we're saying, all right, well, what did I do wrong? I visited a grower in Tifton that had, well, I did, I've never had this kind of injury before. What did I do wrong? Well, maybe you didn't do anything wrong, but first of all, you got to ask yourself, did I miss it? Did I know it was in the field and I chose to let it ride or I chose not to apply an insecticide? Or did, if you missed it, that's a mistake, right? If you didn't know it was there, that's a mistake. If you said, I know it's there, but I've never had a problem with it before, I'm going to wait and see what happens, I don't know. Maybe that's a mistake. You didn't have enough information. It is what it is. Okay? Maybe you didn't have a granular porphyrifos applicator and you couldn't put the insecticide out. Is that a mistake? I don't think so, but it's a, the outcome was still bad. So there's a couple of examples. I don't know. I, I could think of a lot of them, and it didn't matter. I don't want to go through 15 minutes of things that we can't help. But I think it is important when you're thinking about what happened last year that it's not all, you know, you're not going to beat yourself up over things you couldn't do anything about. But now, we're going to talk about things I call unnecessary mistakes, right? This is where somebody might get angry with me. Like, I, he said I didn't, that didn't have to happen to me, but I don't want you to do that. I want you to think. Unnecessary mistakes. First one I can think of is applying insecticides when they're not needed. That's a mistake. If you spray an insecticide on the field and it didn't need to be treated, guess what? You just spent money you don't need to spend. It's like being late with your herbicide or applying a herbicide that you didn't need and you hurt your crop, the wrong herbicide, it's a mistake. I'm not saying that applying insecticides preventatively is always a mistake. I think putting an insecticide in the furrow with your seed is a good, has a good chance of giving you a positive return on investment. But if you're spraying every field you've got every year, I think you need to think long and hard about that. Do you have a scout? If you, have a, if you don't have a scout and you spray every peanut field you've got every year, you might think, well, what would the, the cost of me having a scout? Maybe if I had a scout, I wouldn't have to do that. If you do have a scout and you're spraying every peanut field you have every year, if it was me, I'd sit down and talk with that person. If it's my consultant or my scout, I want to make sure we're on the same page. They may be doing a great job. And you, maybe you're just conservative with your spray thresholds. But I want to know, do I really need to be spraying these fields every year? Because remember what I told you, there's some things that are certain. One of the things I'm certain of is every field in Georgia doesn't need to be sprayed every year. Okay? So that's one unnecessary mistake. The second one is applying the wrong insecticide. Well, how do I know? University of Georgia provides really good, unbiased, you hear me, unbiased information about efficacy of insecticides. I am happy to tell you what I think is going to be the best insecticide to control whatever problem you have in the field. I'm not trying to sell you anything, and I don't get a kickback from nobody. The county agent in your county is the same way. They're going to give you good, unbiased, research-based information about what insecticides you should use. But if you apply the wrong one, anybody ever spray a pyrethroid on tobacco bloodworm, right? It's not a hard mistake to make. You won't kill them. Right? You've spent some money, maybe it wasn't a lot, but you spent some money and you didn't kill any caterpillars. Wrong insecticide, that's a mistake. Unnecessary mistake. Here's another one. I mentioned that velvet bean caterpillars were really abundant in 2019. I don't know how many of y'all had velvet bean caterpillar, some of it depending on what you had done before. If you had already sprayed something for lesser corn stalk borer like Trevathon or Seeds or Diamond, you probably didn't see this thing because it's really susceptible to insecticides. If you already had some residue out there, it probably took them out. But if you didn't have anything out there that would kill caterpillars, we saw a lot of velvet beans. And this picture looks terrible because our projector is not very good and I apologize and I'm willing to buy a new one if anybody from the 
RDC is over here, I'll buy a new projector. But what you're looking at is peanuts that have been essentially defoliated by Bamba bean captain. This insect is easy to control. We can control it. Not only is it easy because we have good products, it's cheap. We have good, cheap products. How many times do I get to stand up here and tell you that? Right? Good, cheap products. Absolutely unnecessary for me to ride around the state of Georgia in September in 2019 and see this. Absolutely unnecessary for my phone to ding twice a day, every day for, the, for two weeks in September with county agents sending me pictures of this. Have you ever seen anything that looked like this? As a matter of fact, I just did. Okay? I don't, I don't want this to happen to you. If this happened, let's think about why it happened. Is it because we did not apply an insecticide when it was needed? Is it because we were too late? Is it because we didn't know that that thing was out there because we're not looking? Okay? Another unnecessary mistake. I'm getting to the end, right? I don't know if I've ever stood up in front of this many people and finished in less time than they told me I had. So I'm going to have to do something because I might so actually get done. Bob says he needs my time, but I don't know if I'm going to give it to him. All right? Here's an unnecessary mistake. I'm going to tell you this, and I, I believe this. There's not a lot of county agents here today because they have, they're at a conference and they couldn't be here. They want to be here, but they can't be here. They have done a really good job over the last few years of educating growers, I think, about the danger of putting pyrethroid insecticide on non-irrigated peanuts, okay, especially when it's hot and dry. Y'all have probably seen this picture before. This is a pretty bad spider mite infestation in some untreated peanuts. This is the same field where bipenthrin was applied, and you can see what happened, right? We, got to, we, we have stopped doing this in a lot of places, but it still happened. We still had fields that I went to in 2019 with spider mite infestations that looked like this. And when I nailed back down to it, it was like we sprayed a pyrethroid three weeks ago to control whatever. It might have been velvet bean caterpillar. It might have been something else. But that pyrethroid went out, and this is the result. This is something we can prevent. We need to make sure we don't do this, okay? Those are the unnecessary mistakes. There's probably some more, right? But Bob is chomping at the bit. Even with this, right? This is like, how do you avoid those pest management mistakes? That's really what it's all about. Don't make the same mistake twice, right? And I don't know if any of y'all caught on to the subtle hints that I dropped through the talk, but guess what I think is number one and number two? Be informed and scout. You're in this room, you're here to try to be informed. There are certain things that are pretty darn certain, right? You need to know those things. If you know those things, you can plan for them. If you plan for them, you're less likely to make mistakes. I had a fifth grade English teacher who said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Okay, I'm throwing out the cliches this morning. But scouting, there's no better way to be informed about what's going on in your field than to scout your field. Be in the field every week. Don't just scout it. Scout it right. If you don't have the time to do that yourself, pay somebody to do it for you. It will pay off in fewer mistakes. All right? Be informed. Scout. Use the right tool. It goes without saying, if you use the right tool, you're going to do a better job. And be on time. I think Dr. Prosco, if he didn't allude to it, he said it explicitly. Being not on time is bad with herbicides. Dr. Kimmerod is probably going to tell you how important it is to be on time with fungicides. If you spray caterpillars after they're gone, you have done nothing. If you spray caterpillars after they've eaten all the leaves, you have done nothing. Okay, be on time. 